presenter. So next talk is uh, Sujoy Kumar Saha, and he is going to talk about product data ecosystems in the digital dental industry. Uh, welcome on stage, uh, Sujoy, and uh, you have uh, now the you have the stage. Hi, my name is Sujay Kumar Saha. I'm working as a data architect at Treeshape. And the topic of presentation is the product data ecosystem in the digital dental industry. We live in an era where data is everywhere. And that is a good thing from your smartphone to your tablet, to that laptop or PC on your desk, data is pervasive and plentiful. It can do amazing things for you. It can propel your business, improve your life and help people. Today, around 80% of data comes from previously untapped, unstructured information from the web, such as social media channels, imagery, etc. Enterprises of all sizes are harnessing tremendous amount of data every day. So why do we need data and its strategy? Data is a critical resource. Data is not new, but it is now growing at an unprecedented pace. We can tell that humans have been recording facts as symbols, numbers, and letters for thousands of years. However, not all data is valuable but its general properties means it is an increasingly critical resource. It is very important. We live in an era where data is so important that it can create value. Data become valuable when it is used to improve social and economic processes, products, organizational methods, and markets. Enhancing access to data is critical to unleash its potential. And it takes tremendous amount of time. But it doesn't come always in general. There are lots of challenges. If you are working in an organization and if you are asking for data, it is hard to share data. Everybody is, is working in silos they are generating their own amount of data, but there is no common access of all data into across the system. Since we are living in an era where sharing of data is so important that we need a data strategy. A data strategy is a plan designed to improve all the ways you acquire, store, manage, share, and use of data. Now, we have the strategy, we have the data. And in this presentations, I would like to highlight mainly focusing into the product specific data. If you are searching for some site, website, you will get some data. And products, what do we mean by the product data? If you have a business, and if you are dealing with some external partners or customers, you should have some kind of product. Either it's your product or it's your services. And product data definition is that a product is a physical or digital good, which has the attributes of existing, having a name, being tradable. So we can define data in different ways. We can define data using the product schema, basically some kind of product attributes like name, like uh, prices, like images, or product data sheets, whatever you name, you can see, or some kind of metadata. Can we live without the product data? Why do we need? What are the benefits of a product data? An effective digital product data platform helps a company, number one, create new business opportunities. Because if you have the efficient and reliable product data easily available and accessible, it will add 
into your businesses. It will improve your profitability for the stakeholders. And if you can share the correct and accurate data with your customers, it will build the confidence of the customers and generate repeat businesses. If you go in any organization, you can see that there are so many technologies to manage product data. So what I did, I just tried to dissect the different types of product data into three categories. Number one is the organizational data. Number two is the product data. Number three is the customer facing data. What do you mean by that? So internal organizational data, if you have a business, you might have heard that you need an enterprise resource planning system, which is a very big system. Every organization should have one to manage their financial transactions. So that is mainly to track their transactional data. Then there is another terminology called master data management. So master data are the data which are consistent and can be used as a reference. Then also we have so many digital assets like technical data sheet. Then we have the uh, videos, we have images of our product. Where do we store? We store them in a digital asset management platform. Then if you are working in an R&D organization, they use both product data management and product lifecycle management. And those are the tools which are helping them to develop their products and manage and configure. And then eventually we cannot sell the raw data into our end customers. We have to manage and control and govern those data. And we are using the product man information management tool to manage them. However, everything can be controlled from the internal organization perspective, but we cannot share them and we have to define the right specific data to the right moment to the right customers. That's why we use the product experience management, which give the best and true experience to our customers and also the product information distribution services, which will distribute data to different channels. Like maybe if you are using your product into Google marketplace or Amazon e-commerce side or some other third party uh, marketplaces or your e-commerce solution or product of sales, you can use the your customer facing data to those channels. Let me give a little bit of journey of the product data from source to consumers. Whenever the product management team decide that they are going to launch some product, they create the idea. They use some resource requirement management solutions and I can start with the beginning with the PLM system. So there they generate the idea and then creates the R&D, creates the product specification and all. And eventually we are moving this data into our enterprise resource planning system where they are controlling the supply chain part, manufacturing, order, finances and purchases and all those different processes. But these are basically raw data they cannot be consumed by the external system. So what should we do? So we, are, we will be using our product information management system, which will be ingest data and reach data. Basically, it will be adding some more values to those data. Maybe one example is the localization where they can localize depending on their market presence and different areas. Then you can configure them and then publish them into the different channels. And at the same time, we can store our images and videos and guides, technical uh, data sheets, all those information into our digital management. And now, if we want to publish all those flow of data into our different consumer channels, it cannot be consumed from a single resource. So what is the best way to support the APIs. APIs are everywhere. Even though if you are touching your mobile phone, if you are connecting your Google uh, mailboxes or Facebook, anything, you will be connecting to, a, to some kind of APIs. 
So API is crucial. And then from there, we can consume our system like e-commerce, mobile app, websites, point of sales, or print and material. Everybody can consume data from different channels. So what does the product data ecosystem would enable us? It fosters speed to commercialization. Let's take an example of that. All the new product related information can be available quickly and easily to the different channel for commercialization purpose. Since if we define a data product data ecosystem, it will give the different product configurator and reseller price list with the new product and pricing. So it will be like better and true quality of data. Data will be easily accessible, so it is faster and it will support the localization and speed. And then it will support the cloud strategy and more flexible API. What do we need into the product data strategy? Product data strategy is a definition where we would like to identify the data. One of the most basic construct of using and sharing data within a company is establishing a means to identify and represent its content. It is the main source where we can store and identify data. When we are identifying the data, we need a place to store them. Unless we are storing them properly, which is easily accessible, it doesn't make any sense. And once we are storing the data, it is also important to provision those data. Provision means sharing the data with different people who can easily access. And we need processing part, so data should be processed. And the most crucial is the governance. Governance is so important that without a governance, we cannot control the data. It will be almost impossible to maintain and manage it. So that's why we need an owner and the control and a structured way of management of data. Now, I would like to highlight the architecture, what we are evaluating at this moment in our company, how do we manage and govern the entire flow of data? Because the R&D system, they are using uh, the PLM, basically for to manage their product data from their ideas to creating the 3D CAD models. And then from there, basically they will be creating their drawings and moving into the production. So production data will be managing in our ERP system. And then those are still the raw data and we need to enrich those data. And then eventually we are moving this data into our BIM platform where we are doing more enrichment and also combining the enrich uh, metadata and the digital assets, it's create a plethora of resources, which is so critical that everybody can consume depending on their needs, basically. So all the front ends application can eventually be access those data. And here in this example, I have highlighted three different tools, basically, which we are using is our e-commerce platform, mobile apps, and websites. Now, how can we support the APIs? Basically, we can use different technologies. We can use the single API gateway service or multiple API gateway. What are the differences? Basically, what we can do, we can cre create a single entry point for our different consumer system through an API gateway. And then in the behind the scenes, we can maintain the microservices based architecture. So it provides a single point of entry for certain group of microservices. API Gateway sits between the client apps and microservices. And the most crucial part is here, the security. How do we control? How do we manage this access permission so that only the authorized users can access and then we can control and govern that part through the API Gateway management? Another mechanism, we can create 
the multiple API gateways instead of a single, and we can create the same architecture using this client specific gateways. So one client can use their gateway. And then in this example, I have highlighted that e-commerce, mobile apps, and website, those are the three consumers application here. And then they are using individual APIs, basically gateways. So e-commerce is consuming data through our shops API gateway, mobile applications consuming their data through our app API gateways and website consuming data through the product experience gateways. So what we are doing here, basically we are dissecting data depending on the business needs. So we will provide the data, whatever is required for that particular specific channels. So that is the way we can control and restrict the data. Now, what kind of security mechanism do we use? We use the JWT based access token. So it authenticates request and forward them to other services. So it is just a simple uh, access based JSON web token based access control. And in this is the way we can provide the individual accesses depending on the client requirement. And this is a very good way to control. We can use other different authentic authentication and authorization mechanism, but uh, this is a pretty uh, standard in the industry nowadays. Now, in the basically, I would like to highlight some of the technological landscape and API architecture. So, as I mentioned earlier, that R&D will be using their product lifecycle management to create their product data, and then ERP systems will consume, and then the marketing team will be creating their fancy digital assets, and PIM solutions will be managing their enrichment process and parts. Now. How do we supply this data to our end customer? So in our organizational architecture setup, we are using Microsoft Cloud basically, and we are using this one connector, which is publishing data from the PIM solution to the Azure search index, and then search index is consuming data through the product APIs, and it is also redirecting to the uh, Azure CDN for our digital assets. So the consumer system, whichever is consuming, they will be accessing data through those APIs and they are getting the reference link to the digital asset. So in this way, we are harmonizing and we are maintaining the data part. Now, coming to the conclusion, basically, I just have highlighted the overall architecture and design of the solution, what kind of benefits we are getting. It is the faster availability of product data improve the business possibility. If you are running a business, you need to make money. That is the main goal in any businesses. And if you have the faster availability of the product data, it will definitely help you to get to the, your customer as fast as possible, and it will definitely improve your business. Secondly, microservice-based architectures, which decouples the integration among different systems. So it, we are using a microservice, so we are creating small services, which are managing only the small, small specific uh, ap applications, and then we are separating them through the basically gateways-based architecture, and gateway will uh, design basically encapsulates the security of concern. And finally, uh, we are basically exposes the client specific APIs based on the access token. And this is the basically overall conclusions and it helps the businesses to get the data as fast as possible and as quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was an entertaining uh, presentation. So we'll dive into uh, let's say an area that you don't get to know like daily. So uh, this was this was interesting for me. So uh, before we so let's allow some time to uh, for uh, people here to to post the uh, questions in the in the chat. But I was uh, uh, let's say uh, 
curious uh, what kind of uh, uh, APIs are specific in this industry. So if you if we see uh, medical uh, in general, we have DCOM and or fire, but this kind of uh, like dental industry is something that is a bit of unknown to me. Yes, that is true. Basically, dental industry is an evolving industry, and our company is a basically uh, it's a like an it's it started in two thousand, and they are evolving along with this digital journey, and we are transforming the digital industry. Basically, we are we are building lots of components and technologies. This is one area where where I focus for to today's presentation. It's mainly the internal product data. Basically, we are. We are develop. We are supporting the entire end-to-end -end value chain of the system. So from the scanners to the basically uh, to the lab scanners and all those uh, entire value chains. So uh, we are using different APIs, but we are also building our in-house APIs basically to support our businesses. So this presentation was mainly focusing on our in-house APIs, which we are building to support our different channels to manage their businesses. So this is nothing to do with the, uh, in general, like general standard dental industry, but this is for our businesses, basically for our internal businesses to support, to connect more with our customers. Our customers are mainly the clinics and all. Yes, thank you. So uh, let's see if we get anything in the chat. Okay, so thank you again. Uh, and now it is time to move to the to the last uh, talk of the session. So thank you, Sudhray. Okay. okay, thank you very much and have a nice day. Yes, you too.